Now for complications after an MI. Like a car crash, the heart has some pretty serious damage, specifically to the left ventricle, which happens to be the main pump, giving oxygen and blood pressure to the entire body. So when this guy fails, we end up with some deadly complications. So our three most deadliest complications here. Number one being cardiogenic shock. We're talking BP so low, it's on the flow. So we watch for signs and symptoms of low cardiac output, being low blood pressure, agitation or confusion, cool and clammy, pale white skin with low urine output, less than 30 mLs per hour. Guys, we need to increase that blood pressure fast with epi, dopamine, and norepi. Now, V-fib and VTAC occurs in around 90% of recovering MI patients. Yes, that's correct, guys, 90%. Since the damaged heart sort of glitches or short circuits like a broken computer, slipping into deadly rhythms like V-fib and VTAC. So remember, we always defibrillate if we don't have a pulse, and always early defibrillation before CPR if given a choice. Big NCLEX tip. We choose defib for V-fib. And we also use cardioversion if you can count a pulse. And always remember to synchronize. Lastly, heart failure is a big issue, or pump failure we call it. Since we have a damaged pump, it fails to pump blood forward, and now it backs up into the lungs and or body, eventually drowning the patient. So remember, HF in heart failure is HF for heavy fluid. Guys, always report these key words. Rapid weight gain. Usually it means water gain. Worsening crackles can mean lung fluid and even sudden edema or JVD. And even big keyword here, new S3 heart sounds or murmurs. NCLEX keywords like rapid, worsening, and sudden usually indicates a priority patient. Always the number one intervention is pushing IV diuretics, like furosemide. Guys, they end in ide, so think the body is dried. And a little side note, not isorcerbide, that's a nitrate for chest pain. Lastly, two other conditions are common, pericarditis and mitral valve prolapse. In pericarditis, the inflammation to the sac around the heart can lead to deadly pericardial effusions, or cardiac tamponade. This is where the heart is basically squished to death by its own blood sac, causing the heart to stop beating. Very common on the NCLEX since it's very deadly. So guys, we always monitor for Beck's triad. So remember Beck. B for big jugular veins or jugular vein distension, E for extremely low BP, and C for you can't hear the heart sounds, also called muffled or distant heart sounds. Now with mitral valve prolapse, the little cords holding the valves can suddenly snap loose from a dead heart muscle. Now the patients will have a heart murmur and even develop atrial fibrillation from blood backing up, stretching out those atria.